In class, we discussed four different types of confidence intervals. Confidence intervals for a single population proportion or population mean, and confidence intervals for a difference in two population proportions or population means. So today's lab is going to explore how to use Minitab in computing those confidence intervals, and also give you practice in recognizing when which type of, which type of confidence interval is appropriate to address a specific question of interest. So for the lab video, I'm going to be using the students 15 data set, although of course for your lab you should use whichever data set was appropriate to your opening week survey. So to begin, let's talk about how to do a confidence interval for a single proportion. This could be useful, for example, if we were interested in estimating the proportion, population proportion of females at Pacific and assume this is actually a random sample of Pacific students. So that variable is listed in column C3 of our spreadsheet. And to compute a confidence interval, we go to stat, basic statistics, I, uh, one proportion, pretty self-explanatory, right? And then uh, what you want to do is under this blank spot here, select the variable you'd like to do a one proportion test to. And also under options, uh, what you want to do instead of the exact method, use the normal approximation because that's the method we used in class. And also notice that you can, you can adjust the confidence level here under options as well. Right. So if we go and we click OK, then you'll notice that Minitab uh, it, it decided that the event was male. So in other words, it's going to compute the proportion of males, not the proportion of females, which of course you could easily get that by subtracting the proportion of males from one. And then it outputs the total sample size, n. The x is the number of males in the sample in this case. The sample proportion would just be the 107 divided by 189. And then the confidence interval here, the 95% confidence interval, would be a 95% confidence interval for the proportion, for the population proportion of males. So we can interpret this by saying that we're 95% confident that between 49.5 and 63.7% of all students are males. Right. So you can also do, a, do the other sorts of confidence intervals we discussed. They're also fairly straightforward. For a single mean, you would go to one sample t, okay? because we talked about using the t distribution to compute a confidence interval for a mean when the sample standard deviation is used. And uh, this would be useful when we want to summarize a numeric variable. So one of the numeric variables in our example, for example, is risk score. So if we select risk score here, and under options, again, you can adjust the confidence level if you want. So when we click OK, we get this output, which shows how many students there were. This right here shows the estimated sample mean. This shows the estimated sample standard deviation. The SE mean, remember, is the sample standard deviation divided by square root of n. And then we also get this 95% confidence interval for the population mean of risk score. Now, the difference in sample confidence intervals can also be computed under the stat basic stats menu. And in analogous ways, you know, if you want to do two proportions, just switch to two proportions. If you want to do a difference in two means, switch to a two sample t test. There's a couple of subtle differences here. When you want to do a two proportions test, this might be useful, for example, if we wanted to not just look at birth sex, but also look at how birth sex is related to risk level. So in this situation, you'll see there's these choices, samples and sample IDs here that you can choose between. On one level, it doesn't matter which of your two variables you choose as samples and sample IDs, but it will affect the interpretation of the results. So for example, if we discuss birth sex as the sample and risk level as the sample IDs, and under options here, we're going to uh, Leave this alone now. The notice is, don't worry about this for now. We'll discuss that issue a little bit later in the class. But again, you can adjust the confidence interval if you need to. All right. So now when we click OK, all right, let's see what it did. So it defined the event to be male. All right. So the way to interpret this output now is that if you look at all the high risk takers, out of those, 59 were male, and there was a total of 85. So the proportion of males in the high risk taker group was about 69%. Right? In the low risk taker group, the proportion of males was about 0.46. 
And then Minitab is going to do a test for a difference in the proportion of high risk taking males minus the proportion of low risk taking males. The estimate for that difference is 0.23, which is just simply the difference in these two. And the 95% confidence interval goes from 0 0.09 to 0 0.37. Right. So the way to interpret this is that we're 95% confident that between 9% and 37% more of high risk takers are males than of low risk takers. Right. Now, just to illustrate the difference, says that you know you might get if you chose made different choices. If we go back to the two proportion test and we switch the role of risk level and birth sex. So we now choose risk level as the samples and birth sex as the sample IDs. Now notice that Minitab broke things down in a different way. It defined the event as being a low risk taker. And now the output shows the number of low risk taking females and the number of low risk taking males, as well as the corresponding proportions of those. Right? And then when, it, when you look at the confidence interval, notice that these, uh, this, this, this actually ended up coming out the same and this came out the same. But now what is this saying? It's saying that the, the difference in the proportion of females who are low risk takers versus males who are low risk takers is 0.23. And, and this, these numbers as well relate to the difference between those two quantities. Right. So which one, how you interpret it depends on what choice you make. However, on the other hand, you can, you can make either choice and still get a meaningful result. Now, the final type of confidence interval we discussed was for a difference in two population means. And for that one, we go to stat, basic stats, two sample T. Okay. Now, this one, it does make a little bit uh, more, it's, it's a little more important what you choose as sample and which is the sample IDs. But also, you can't get into too much trouble because notice that Minitab will only allow you to select numeric variables for the sample. And with sample IDs, you can select from categoricals as well. So what's, what's an example of a situation where we might want to use a test for a difference in two means? Well, one situation would be if we wanted to compare the risk scores of males versus females as opposed to just comparing the proportions of males and females in the two groups. So in that situation, we would enter risk score under samples. Right. Birth sex under sample IDs. Under options, notice that you can you can change the confidence level again, as we've been doing. We don't have to worry about these for now. We'll also discuss this assume equal variances later in the class. But for now, just hit OK. Right. And then you'll notice that it tells you that it, it, it's, it, it gives you some summary statistics up here, right? Again, the number of females, number of males, the sample mean risk score of females, sample mean risk score of males, sample standard deviations, SE means for the two groups. And then down here, it gives you an estimate for the difference. And this number right here, notice, is, is the female mean minus the male mean, right? Which means that this confidence interval is also for the difference in the mean female risk scores and the mean male risk scores. So to interpret this, we would say we're 95% confident that the mean female risk score is between 4.75 and 1.64 points lower than the mean male risk score. 